I'm curious about what kinds of growing pains you've been going through, what kinds of restructuring you've got in mind going to, towards the future. We're going to structure the conversation for the next 10 minutes or so on a model created by a fellow named Itzhak Adizis in a book that he published in 1988 called Corporate Life Cycles. Now this particular model, in fact I use models a lot because they're very easy to understand. They have neat boxes and circles and arrows to tell you exactly where to go. See, when I visit your companies, you actually have people who work there, so sometimes things are a little messy, sometimes difficult to see what's really happening. But if we can take a model and put it on top of your organization, sometimes we can see things that we couldn't see clearly before. What Adesis did with this particular model is he chronicled the birth of every organization from that entrepreneurial idea, which in some cases was a hobby. In some cases it should have stayed a hobby, but then you're all business entrepreneurs, you can't help yourselves, you're going to turn it into an ongoing business. And then what happens to that business as it grows? Grows through very predictable stages. Let's see how Adesis describes this, and some of you may be able to think back at this stage in the life cycle as your organization was uh, younger, uh, smaller. Uh, Adesis describes this as the infant organization. Now this infant organization comes with some very predictable characteristics. First, there's a high level of risk. There's also typically negative cash flow in the beginning, and even larger organizations may have experienced negative cash flow. There's also very little management depth, which really isn't a problem because there's nobody to delegate anything to anyway, really doesn't matter. The necessary focus for this organization has to be on this one thing and this one thing only. They just have to make some sales. They have to get their product or service into the marketplace because if they don't make some sales, what happens? They go out of business. So this is where the focus is in the very beginning. Let's see how Adesis describes this stage in the life cycle. The name that he gives to it is the go-go phase. This go-go phase comes with some predictable characteristics. Um, there's a change in behavior of the organization at this point. They have this momentum of sales behind them. While they still have to make sales, it's not as much of a problem as it was at the very beginning. And with this momentum of sales comes a feeling of invincibility. They think they did it once and survived. They didn't die, they didn't get killed off. So they think they could probably do it again and again and again. Their behavior is very opportunistic, very reactive in the marketplace. Organizational difficulty is focus. What is it that I focus on? Ian, you probably go through some of these same things. You've got a company here that you're primarily focused on, but you've got these other things that distract you. Um, this organization has difficulty putting all that stuff together. For this organization to survive, thrive, and move to the next level, by the way, how many people have heard someone say, I want to take my company to the next level? You realize they have absolutely no clue what they're talking about <laughs> until you look at a model like this and you can see there are some very predictable stages that organizations go through. Focus shifts. We now have to figure out how to get everybody moving in the same direction. Too many chiefs, everybody just running around doing what they're, they think is appropriate. We have to now sit down and define and document our methods and processes so that as we delegate things out, everyone's doing the same thing in the same way. So at the first stage in infancy, it's a matter of what do we do. At the second stage in go-go, it's a matter of how do we get it done. Let's take a look and see how Adesis describes this stage in the life cycle. The name that he gives to it is the adolescent phase. Again, this comes with some predictable characteristics. There begins to be a shift towards working smarter, a shift towards getting organized. Remember back in the beginning, we were just had to make some sales? Back in the beginning, those didn't even have to be profitable sales because we put all the expenses on a line of credit, credit card, whatever it took to get this organization out of the ground. But at some point, the bank actually wants you to pay off that line of credit, right, Karen? Mainly so they can take it away from you, but that's another story for another day. At some point, the organization does have to become profitable. They do have to begin to pay down their debt. To do that, the necessary focus shifts once again. Remember, in the beginning, it was a focus just on production. Then it was a, a shift towards documenting methods and processes. But as we were documenting those methods and processes, we thought that the best sequence was one, two, three, four, five. Turns out that wasn't really efficient. We didn't really make enough money. We got the job done, but we weren't profitable. Our necessary focus now shifts. It's not a matter of one, two, three, four, five, the most efficient system. 
is 15432. That turns out to be the most efficient system. So our focus shifts at this stage into a system focus. We'll see how Jesus describes this stage in the life cycle. The name that he gives to it is the prime phase. This again comes with some predictable characteristics. There begins to be departmental turfs, these silos that Kevin described. Uh, there's also a struggle to find and train new managers because as we get new managers into the organization, um, they really don't have a lot of management training. We sprinkle a little fairy dust on them and, and tell them they're managers and just hope they figure it out uh, as time goes by. For this organization to survive and thrive, their focus has to shift once again. Remember, the beginning was just a focus on production. Then we had to define and document our methods and processes. Then we had to take those methods and processes and put them into a profitable sequence or a profitable system. But now we have multiple systems and subsystems that have to be integrated together. It's not enough just to have one or two high-performing departments. All departments have to work in concert together. And yet, there's friction between those departments. So the focus shifts to be one of integration. He calls this the stable phase. Their biggest organizational challenge is simply sustaining the machine. Um, one of my clients has a payroll of $2.4 million a week. Biggest issue is sustaining the machine. Question, how much trouble can you get into and how fast can you get into trouble when you get out of sync with your marketplace and your payroll is $2.4 million a week? Necessary focus shifts. Everything else has been focused on an internal focus, but now we have to begin to look at the market. We have to begin to look outside. We have to begin to look externally. The focus is now creating a clear and compelling vision that is relevant to your marketplace. Very predictable stages that organizations go through, um, but this is helpful to construct an idea or some insights into the kinds of challenges that you're going through as an organization.